When it comes to text in Inkscape, there are so many things that you can do which will elevate them text designs to the next level. Adding a drip effect is one of those things. Hello my friends, Rob here from Button Press Graphics back with another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can get this interesting dripping effect. And I'm also going to give you two different methods that you can use separately, but I think it is way better when you combine the two. So without further ado, let's get started. Now as you can see on screen, I have three text designs all containing the word drip. Now this word itself is just the standard word used with the text editor and then converted into a path. Now, as you can see, if you look at this one here, this is using the tweak tool. This one is using the node tool and editing the nodes. And then this one is what you can get when you combine the two. Now the reason for these little tutorials and design ideas is because while you're trying to recreate this design, you are learning different things and different aspects of this program. So you'll start to learn them without even realizing you're learning. So let me show you exactly what I mean. So when you start, you're going to need to get some text. Now you can do this by going to your text tool right here on the left hand side. Give that a click. Now you can start typing by clicking anywhere on the canvas and using your keyboard. So I'm going to add the word drip like I did in the examples in the beginning. And now with that done, I'm going to switch to my select tool so I can increase the size. Now, of course, this is just the standard text, but we need to change it. So we're going to bring open our text editor. Now you can find your text editor along the top underneath the file bar, but if you are using the 1.4 beta of Inkscape, then you will be able to find it here on the right hand side. Give that a click and it will open up your text editor. Now all you have to do is go through all your fonts to see which style you want to use. Now I think I'm going to go with something a little bit different this time. I'm going to go with Pacifico Regular. So as you can see, it's more flowing, more joined up writing, but it has got a thick stroke and that is pretty much what I'm looking for. So now I've got the text that I want. We just need to convert this to a path. So I'm going to go to path, object to path. So now it's no longer a text object. It is a path, as you can see in the bottom info bar down here. So now what I want to do is to make this look a little bit more dynamic and that's very, very simple. I can do this by clicking on it a second time to get the rotation handles up and then while holding shift and alt, I can get this little side skew bar and I'm just going to take it up one notch. So it looks something like that. We can now add an offset, but first we're going to need to duplicate it. So we're going to right click and duplicate. And now I'm going to change the color to something like a red so it's very easy to see. And now we want to change the opacity. So we can either open our fill and stroke menu or come down to this opacity and put 50% inside. That's just a quicker way of doing the opacity without having to go to the fill and stroke menu. Now that we have that done, we are going to add an offset. So we go to path, dynamic offset, and now we are just going to increase the size. I'm not really concerned about the area in the middle of the D because we will be filling that in anyway. So I'm going to leave it around there. Now, of course, as I said, we have these little areas here, but we do not have to worry about them. But now we're just going to go to path, object to path to finalize that offset. Now with that done, I'm going to go back to path and I'm going to break apart. Now what this has done, as you can see with the D here, is to separate the outside edge of what we have selected and any areas in the middle, it has separated into their own separate pieces. 
But now, because we have all them separate pieces and the main piece all selected, all we have to do is go back to Path Union. And just like that, we've now created a full shape. You select the piece that has got the voids in the middle. So like the pieces that are missing here, here and here. Go to Path, Break Apart, Path, Union. And now we have one solid shape. Now one more step before we start adding the drip effect is we're going to use the select tool and then we're going to drop it to the bottom. With that done we can now increase the opacity back to 100. Now like I said there are two different methods when it comes to adding the drip effect. So first I'm going to go over the tweaking effect. On your toolbar on the left hand side there is this button the tweak tool. Now I'm not going to go over every feature in today's video, but what I want to show you is exactly what this does. So what I'm going to do with this design is I'm going to select the shape that I want to edit. And now I'm going to go back to the tweak tool. Now with the tweak tool, I'm going to put this down to 50. I'm going to keep the fidelity as 50 and the width as 10. And now I'm just going to go on the bottom edges of this red shape here. And I'm now just going to slowly warp a little bit. Now what I am trying to do is just give the effect that of gloopiness. What I am not trying to do at the moment is cause any actual drips. So of course if you want in like a smudged effect you can do this and each imperfection is going to help and now we have our tweaked drip effect now you can keep playing around with it until you get the look that you're happy with and if you don't like anything you can undo each one of the movements as well but now I'm going to show you how to add some proper drips to it as well. Now for the drips, we are going to go to our node tool. Now as you can see with me using the tweak tool, we have a lot more nodes. Well, this is good because this gives us more nodes to play around with. Now what I'm going to do is zoom in. And I'm going to start from the right and work my way to the left. But you can do this in any order that you want. And what I'm going to look for is groups where three nodes are quite close together. Now this one looks about right. I want the first drip to be around here. So I'm going to get this node here and I'm going to bring it down. And I'm going to decide exactly where I want the drip to end. So I think around there would be perfect. Now as you can see with this node highlighted, we have the two rotation handles right here. I'm going to hold control and I'm going to make them completely horizontal with each other. And then I'm going to stretch them out. So I can get much more of a bulbous curve right here. Now when it comes to getting the tops right, right here and here, all you have to do is Take the node that is at the corner, so either one of these two, select it, and then take this hold control and drag it in. And then we're going to do the same for this one. Take the rotation handles and drag it in. And that is going to always give you the natural curve to keep your line going in the way that you want. And now when I zoom out, it looks like it's dripping. So now I'm just going to go through the rest of the image and I'm going to add some drips of varying thickness, height and of course width. As an added little extra, you can, if you wish, add new nodes. So if you want there to be a slight drip coming down here like I do, we can take this node, this node and come in the middle and then double click to add another node. Now again, just holding control, I'm going to drag that down. I'm going to make these bottom lines 
completely horizontal and quite wide but not too much and then do exactly the same as we did earlier for these parts right here hold control drag it inwards just like that we are done so now when i select off it with my select tool you get something that looks a whole lot more convincing like this but now you can go one step further if you so wish you can add a gradient to it for example so by going to my fill and stroke menu which you can open up by coming to this button on the right hand side toolbar but again, if this toolbar isn't there, it will be up here underneath the file bar. With that selected, I'm going to add a linear gradient. And I'm just going to move the start and the end points. I'm going to have the start point down low and the end point vertically up at the top. And now I'm just going to use the branding colors. So I'm just going to change this red to a lighter blue like so and now i'm going to change this red which has got no opacity i'm going to turn the opacity all the way up and then i'm going to make this a dark blue not much of a difference just enough to make it very noticeable like so and now i want the dark blue to be at the bottom so i'm just going to select this button to switch it around but i also suggest playing around with the colors i mean that looks really good to me so there are many different ways that you can go with the colors you can even put a border around this entire design as well if you wanted to but that is how you create the drip effect Did you know that you can become a member of the Button Press Graphics YouTube channel? Well, now you do. You will get a lot of added benefits and you will directly support the channel, enabling me to make much better content in the future. Also, you can send in your artwork into the creative corner. This is a regular section where I will showcase your work in a future video. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell and I will see you next time.